Hello and welcome to this tutorial series. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create uh, Pong in Unreal Engine 4 using Blueprint. We're going to start by uh, making uh, meshes that we'll use as the uh, different objects in the scene. Uh, then we'll add some functionality to it. Uh, we'll add audio, uh, we'll set up collision and boundaries and things like that. And then we'll add a uh, artificial intelligence for the uh, second player. And then we'll also uh, set up a menu and a loading system as well as creating the option for a two-player game. So with that in mind, if that sounds interesting to you, let's go ahead and just jump right in. I'm going to be using 4.7.2 of the engine. And we'll just let that go ahead and load up. Okay, I'll go to New Project, Blank, No Starter Content, and we'll name this UE4Pong. Okay, so here we are, we're ready to go. Um, we're just going to go ahead and go to File, New Level, Empty Level. That's the first thing we need. And for reference, I'm just going to make this easy on us. Um, I'm going to use an image of a, a version of Pong I've already made. And we'll use that as the basis for where the sizes of objects and things like that. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a uh, BSP, a box, drag it into the scene, and we'll zero this out. Then we'll make this, uh, we'll, we'll leave it as it is now. But what we need to do is we need to import um, this reference texture I have. Um, now, you can, I'll have this uh, linked in the description for you to download, but uh, it's completely optional. If you want to make Pong a little wider or a little smaller, it's up to you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate to where I have that saved. And this one right here, it's uh, 1290 by 900 pixels. And I'm just going to drag that right into the content, uh, man content browser right here. It'll ask me about uh, that it's not a power two, but that's okay. And then I'll open up that texture. So you'll see basically all this is, is this is what the final game will look like. It's a screen cap of it. And it has the uh, size of the ball, the size of the paddles, the size of the actual uh, arena. And this will just be useful uh, for reference to us. So I'll just save this. That way it will be saved in the content browser. And then we'll go back into the scene. Uh, one thing I'm going to do before we go further, I'm just going to go up to File, Save All. And that will ask me to create, uh, save the level as. So we'll name this level uh, Player 1 Main, P1 Main. That way we have a, uh, a map that will actually show up. And now what you can do is go up to Edit, Project Settings, Maps and Modes. And inside here, just set the game default map to P1 Main and the editor default startup map to P1 Main. And that will just make it so that every time you load up the editor or the game starts, it will start in this map. We'll change this later on as we need, but for now it will just make it convenient. Okay, good. So go ahead and just save one more time. You can hit Control s on the keyboard. Um, unless it's not necessary, in which case it wasn't there. Uh, and then you can right click somewhere in here and go ahead and create a new material and we'll call this uh, M underscore uh, reference. Double click on that. And in here we're going to hold uh, T and then left click. And what we're going to do basically is we're going to make a material that's going to be mapped to one side of this cube that we'll then use uh, as a reference uh, for the actual texture it's, uh, we'll actually use as a reference so we know the sizes of all the things that we'll be placing like I said earlier. So the way we'll do that is we'll create a texture sample we'll go ahead and hit none, we'll go to the uh, Unreal uh, Pong gameplay texture I have here this will be in the description for you to use if you need it and then we'll just basically uh, plug this into the emissive color of the object. We'll change this from a uh, shading mode uh, default lit to unlit that way it kind of uh, lights up like that. And then what we want to do is we can hit apply. And if we go back to our main scene here, we can, we can select one of these faces and we'll just drag it on there. And you'll see it's a little, little strange. So it's not exactly mapped one to one, which is what we want. kind of wanted just a single version of this across the whole face. But it's actually being tiled multiple times. And let's actually see what happens if I get a top view. And I want to, or actually let's just go to the perspective. And what happens if I uh, if I make this a little larger? Let's say I go like this. And you go, oh geez, it's it's kind of tiling infinite. It looks like it's uh, tiling in world space as this object is getting larger. There's just more and more tiles. But what you want is you want a single uh, version, a single version of this texture stretched through the whole side, no matter how big we make this. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to look at the actual uh, texture itself. Inside here, you can see at the top right, it's 1290 pixels by 900 pixels, or 1290 pixels by 900 pixels. So just to make this easy so we get the aspect ratio right, let's go into our top view here. 
And one of the things uh, we're going to do is just going to put those numbers right into here. So 1, 2, 9, 0 by, uh, I forget what it was, 900. That seemed right. And one thing you're noticing here is that this looks kind of right, like the correct aspect ratio. But in fact, the way we're going to make this game, up the forward director is going to be going this way. The reason for that is that when we set up a uh, isolated camera that's going to be controlling uh, the actual, what's well, going to be the camera for the scene that's not connected to the character controller or the pawn controller, it's going to be uh, rotated uh, downward. And there's some weird rotation things that happen. So basically, you can just take my word on it, we're going to reverse these values so that the basically the up direction on the board is going to be this direction. Or I think maybe it's this direction instead of being, so the aspect ratio is basically just rotated 90 degrees. But you can see here, now we have this mesh, and it's uh, got a lot of different versions of that, that thing tiled on it. So let's go ahead and see if we can fix that. Um, sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't. I'm pretty sure it'll work this time, so we just have to stand by me, and if it doesn't work, we'll probably figure it out. So the first thing we need is we're going to make a, uh, a special type of node inside the material editor. And it's going to be a bounding box 0 to 1 UVW. And this just takes, as it says there, creates a locally aligned 0 to 1 value in X, Y, and Z. So this will just match the bounding box of the object, the actual size of it. And you can use that as a, a reference for your actual uh, textures so that it will always be stretched to the size of the object. It's pretty useful. So we'll go ahead and grab the result here, drag off from it, and we'll make a component mask. And what this is going to do is it's going to make it so that we only use the X and Y values. So R and G map to the uh, U and V in here. So essentially it's the uh, left and right and the up and down values because it's only a 2D game. So we've got uh, RNG here with RNG here. That looks great. Component mask. Next thing we're going to do is if you look at this, we want this zero up here to be facing this direction. So these actually need to be rotated 90 degrees. So we'll go in here and we'll drag off of this component mask and create a custom rotator. And we'll see if this works. I've had some issue with this, but well, we'll go ahead and hold down 1 on the keyboard, create a new value here, and we'll plug this into the rotation angle. We'll make this 0.75. And the reason it's 0.75 is because the rotation angle here is from 0 to 1. 0 to 1 corresponds as 0 to 360 degrees. So 0 0.75 or 0 0.75 is the equivalent of uh, rotating the, uh, the, uh, the setup 270 degrees, uh, which I believe is what we want. It may need to be 20, uh, 0.25, but let's just start with this, see if we can get it rotated pretty close. Then I'll go ahead and just plug this into here, and uh, we'll see what happens. This kind of tan image comes up, which uh, may be a good sign, maybe a bad sign. We'll see what happens. And yes, in fact, it has worked. So if we look at our screen now, you see it's mapped perfectly to the actual size of this. This is exactly what we want. And now that I'm looking at it, let's actually just make this a little thinner, just so that we know it's kind of like a, almost like a texture plane, or a, an image plane like you would use in a 3D software modeling system. And that's a little more kind of closer to what we want. So now that we've got this set up, let's go into our top view. And let's turn on the lit. And in fact, it is facing the right way. So this is the 275 degree, or I'm sorry, 270 degree rotation. 0.75 is three quarters away through 360 degrees. And so this all looks right. Now we have this set up. We can just basically build our scene on top of it. And we'll know that we always have the right size for the objects. Although, one thing I want to make note of is we're going to scale this up. First thing we're going to do, we're going to base this around the size of the ball. In this case, we're going to make a ball that's going to be 100 by 100 by 100 Unreal units. And then we're going to scale this to make sure it matches that size. And then we'll use it for all other reference. So the way we'll do that is we'll grab another BSP. We'll create a box right there. And we'll go ahead and just set it to 0, 0, 0. You see it'll get kind of weird because it'll like merge with this other BSP. You don't have to worry about that right now. We'll fix that in a second. And on the size here, we'll set this to 100, 100, 100. So you've got a cube that's 100 by 100 by 100. That's kind of a good size. You know, it's uh, 100 centimeters uh, in all directions. So it's, you know, not going to be too small for the physics engine. It'll have a good kind of reference uh, in the actual scene. And you're noticing, as I'm saying that, that this board is very small for that. Because if this is the ball, that's kind of a very l large ball. So the first thing we'll do is we'll go to Perspective, Top View. And we'll just grab this BSP brush here. And let's see, what, what do you think is a good size for this? The way we can find out a good size for this pretty easily is um, we'll just scale it up. Before we do that, I'm sorry, let me just grab the ball and we'll pull it out of this um, mesh. Because then you can actually see this. You see how it, like when it intersects with it, it cuts into it. It uh, messes up the UV. So let's go to the top view again. 
and we'll just scale this up until it's about the right size as this ball. That's getting close, okay. Let's go to the lit unlit mode. And we can just move this around. Oops. Maybe easier to actually move the ball or the uh, platform itself, but we'll see what works for us. So it still needs to be a little bigger. And this doesn't have to be perfect, it's just supposed to get a, uh, a basic idea. Um, well, it seems like it's intersecting again. So I'll go ahead and just push this down, because since we're going to be working the top view, it doesn't matter. And that's looking pretty close, honestly. Um, we could be a little tiny bit bigger. Let me zoom out so I get a better understanding of what I'm working with here. We got uh, scale 0.375. Make sure all these are even. Okay, so that looks better. So that's looking actually a little bigger than it now. 0.375. It looks like it's scaling in that one a little bit. Let's see how how close this guy is now. Good enough for me. I'm happy with that size. That's pretty much the same size. This is just a, a reference so we know, you know, generally how large things are. So good. So 3.375. That's exactly the size we want. We can just leave it right where it is. We'll go ahead and put this back to a 0, 0, 0 position. Go to our top perspective. And then go ahead and just grab the ball and pull it out of the mesh once again. And now we know that this is a good size for our scene. So everything will be based off of a 100, um, an even number. And it will also have the correct size for everything else set up. And this is based off um, a version of Pong. I forget actually what it's from. It may be from uh, the Atari, or it may be from um, the actual arcade. I can't remember offhand, but this was based off the original, as far as I can tell. Uh, one, of the, one of the earlier versions of Pong. Okay, so we have our ball here. And we, now we have it set up. We're going to go ahead and click this little tab right here. Pull that down, and we're going to create a static mesh. This, will, this is like a static mesh in the same way you'd have like you'd import from Blender or Unreal Engine, or uh, I'm sorry, from Blender or uh, 3ds Max or Maya. Um, then you can use it. You can use this uh, this this originally a BSB as a uh, static mesh that you'd use anywhere else. And this is just convenient. You could import an object from Blender or something like that. But since this, you can just do this in Editor. Uh, this is pretty convenient. So let's label this uh, uh, SM for static mesh underscore ball, and we'll create that static mesh. And now you see in the scene here we have a little static mesh that we can go into, we can edit, and we can look at. Pretty cool. So right now we're set up with our map. We've got our background for reference. We've got our little ball here that we're going to be uh, setting up soon. Now what we want to do is create the uh, paddles. So we'll make the paddle uh, out of another BSP brush. I'll go ahead and just uh, hit, hit Control S to save my scene. And we'll just go right here, add a new box brush. Well, actually, maybe we'll just start with zeroing it out. That way we know it's nice and clean. Okay. And let's see. We'll go to the uh, top view. And since we have uh, this in uh, the unlit mode, we'll go ahead and move that cube up. Let's see. What direction is that going to be? Z. We'll just make it 100. Maybe that's not correct. Let me just go into perspective again and see where we're at. No, that's correct. It just wasn't enough. Okay. Go to top view. Drag this guy down. We'll see what is this. What about the size of this? Is we'll start with the 100 again, because we know that's the size of our paddle. It looks like it's the same width as our paddle, just about. It's off by a little tiny bit. Doesn't matter. And maybe it's uh, let's see. Maybe it's the z-axis and the x-axis. Maybe three. I'm sorry. It should be 300. A little more than that. How about a 350? Yeah, that's perfect. So that's about just the right size. So now we got our paddle there. And that looks good to me. It's a good size for a paddle. Go ahead and go to Create Static Mesh, and this will be SM Paddle. Great. Okay, so now we've got our paddle in the scene. We got uh, we created our ball. Here's the paddle. There's a new static mesh. And now what we want to do is we're just going to create um, a few more things. We're going to create the boundaries for the map. So we're going to create a static mesh that's going to serve as the uh, outside boundary. We actually only need to create one, one time, and then we can use that uh, and scale it and change the size of it for everything else. So we will create another box. We'll zero that out. We'll change this to 100, 100, 100. Go into the top view. And we'll uh, just go ahead and drag this to the edge. So something right about here should be good. 
um, because the camera is going to not be able to see much beyond this. Um, and I think in the final version, there may be uh, a white line either side, depending on the aspect ratio you make. But basically, drag the cube over to the side, um, and then we'll see what's the right th axis here. We'll make this uh, right to the edge. So maybe something like, let's see, 5200. Is that pretty close? Maybe 5100. That's looking pretty good. And we'll make it a little thicker just to be safe in case there's a really fast moving ball. We're going to have a little more uh, depth to this so that it, it can uh, ensure that it doesn't go through. Okay, that's looking pretty good to me. We'll just drag that out and we'll just see. We'll line it up to that edge. That looks good. Go ahead and the top perspective. And now we've got this little uh, little side platform here, which is exactly what we need. That's all we need for that. We'll actually, uh, in the final version, we'll, we'll take this and we'll copy it over here, and then we'll make one for either side, and that'll be the four boundaries of the map, which is all we need. And uh, that's all we need there. So we can go ahead and click Create Static Mesh. We'll make a SM. Uh, we'll just make this boundary. Okay. And now we've got a static mesh for that. Great. And delete that out of the scene. And the one last thing we're going to need uh, before we end this tutorial uh, video right here is we're going to create the uh, text meshes that are going to serve as these um, the score counter. Now you could do this in the um, in the Unreal uh, uh, the Unreal uh, GUI system, or you could just do them as I'm going to do them here. Uh, I think you could do either way you'd like, but I think it's useful that you know at least you see how to do it with a text. Uh, I think what is it actually called? A text render mesh. And then later on, we'll go through the UMG uh, UI system in uh, Unreal, show you how to do things uh, with the te So basically, we'll show you how to do the text render stuff, and we'll show you how to do the menu stuff. So maybe it's a good uh, introduction to both. So we'll just go ahead and grab one of these text renders and drop it down on the scene here. You see it'll make a little tiny thing here, and it'll say text. So we're going to basically just line that up to this one here. So we'll grab the uh, little object here. I'm going to press E on the keyboard to... Uh, rotate this and we'll do something like this. We'll rotate it 180 degrees and then we'll rotate it uh, 90 degrees down and so now it's facing that way and instead of just scaling it up what we'll actually do is uh, if you go to the settings over here one of these settings should actually control the world size and that's what we want right there. Another thing we're going to do is you notice it's scaling from the corner there we actually want it from the center so we'll go to center and then if we go for vertical alignment to text center. Here, we'll enter the text, we'll make it a zero, so we know it lines up pretty good, and we'll go into the top view. That way it lines up perfectly. So that's pretty close, but it could be a little bigger. We'll make that about that big. I'll see, we'll drag that over. That looks great. Uh, maybe a little smaller. We'll make it a nice even number. How about 820? And that looks nice to me. That's about just about the right size. So that looks great. I'll go to top, perspective, and we'll take this guy, we'll hold Alt on the keyboard and drag, and we'll drag him right over to where the other guy is. So now we've got these two scores, and we're going to just name these. So this will be, uh, I guess this will be, let's see, player one, player one, uh, score, text, And this other one, which uh, if you notice, I'll just click in the uh, outliner there, but it's just this guy. We'll name this the almost the exact same thing. P2, score, text. So now we've got our scene set up, and uh, it looks pretty good to me. So we've got our paddle, which we can drag in. We've got our boundary, and we've got our ball. And we'll fix the invalid light map setup in the next video. But basically, we've got all the things we need that we'll be building off of uh, to make our game in the future. Uh, so next video, we'll be uh, working on setting up the game mode, and we'll get e be getting the uh, paddle to actually move and be blueprinted. So I appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Hopefully uh, you stick with it, and if this is helpful, feel free to give me a like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, feel free to comment. I'll try and get back to you. Um, and also I have fan funding uh, enabled on YouTube, so if you uh, really appreciate these videos and want to see more like it, feel free to uh, support me however you can. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you in the next one.